In this video, I'm going to share a 100% free step-by-step -step process for selling print-on-demand products that can make you passive income. I'm going to cover some free research methods to find niches. I'll show you how to check for trademarks with a free tool. Then we're going to use an AI art generator that gets some amazing results totally for free. You will learn how to upscale the quality of your graphics and remove the backgrounds for free as well. And I will show you how to upload your designs to a free platform that you can get started on today. One of the best marketplaces to do your niche research on is definitely Amazon, because in comparison to all of the other online marketplaces, they by far have the most traffic. So one free way to conduct research on Amazon would be through using this merch research tool, and it will be linked in the description. All you have to do on this page is literally leave everything in the default and then hit search. And this is going to bring up the amazon.com search results and filter out clothing products, specifically clothing that is listed through the Amazon Merge program. One more thing to note right here, you need to have an American zip code selected for the address that they deliver to, because otherwise you won't get the same results because these clothing products, they don't actually deliver outside of the US. So you can just copy my zip code if you want. Additionally, you might be wondering why I've got all of these extra buttons and the numbers underneath each listing, this extra data right here and the keywords. This is all displayed through two free Chrome extensions, which I also recommend you add to your browser because it will help you out a lot with this niche research method. So the first one is called DS Amazon Quick View, and that displays this BSR ranking right here. And the second Chrome extension is Productor, that gives you all of this extra data at the bottom and also adds these little buttons at the top. Both of those Chrome extensions will be linked in the description as well. So now to actually get started, what you want to do is change the sort by from featured to newest arrivals. And this is going to show us a lot of the products that have been recently added to the platform. So we see a variety of designs, many of which have never sold. How do I know they haven't sold? Well, the BSR ranking right here says not applicable. If there's no BSR, that means the product has never sold. If we scroll down a bit further, some of these listings will actually have a BSR rating. That means they have had a sale. And in case you don't know how BSR works, first of all, it stands for best seller ranking. And the idea is the lower the BSR, the better a product is selling. The number one bestseller in the clothing, shoes, and jewelry category is getting the most sales, and it would have the BSR of one. So you want to be as close as possible to that number, essentially. Generally, anything above a 1 million BSR is quite a slow seller. Items between sort of 500,000 to a million are selling every now and then, and items below a 500,000 BSR are selling more regularly on a daily basis. Now, whilst we're scrolling through this, we want to look for interesting designs that have been recently added and that are already getting sales, so that have a BSR number, like in these cases right here, because those could potentially actually be niches that we could enter and also get some sales in. Now, some of them will be related to trends or trademark topics, perhaps like this one, for example, is related to Dr. Zeus. So we want to avoid that, but you are going to find some interesting topics and that we could potentially create designs for. Typically, I look out for evergreen niches, meaning topics that people are interested in throughout the entire year, because that is the way to build passive income. You don't want to keep jumping onto trends because trends fizzle out, the sales drop down back to zero once the trend is over, and then the income goes back to zero as well. And that doesn't really make it very passive. So evergreen niches are essentially hobby based. They're related to occupations, to animals, people's interests, and anything that could be sold throughout the entire year as a birthday gift, for example. So here's an example of one of those designs. It says serial quilter. This is definitely an evergreen topic. It's related to quilting a hobby, and this has got a 999k BSR, and it was added on February the 23rd. So recently added, it is selling. The BSR number is not too impressive, but that's to be expected with a product that is very recently posted. It is still a good sign that it sold very, very quickly within the first week at least that's when I'm recording this on the 29th of February. So it's sold within the first week. That is a good sign. So quilting is a potential niche that we could write down on our list to look 
into. Here's another potential evergreen niche that I've found. So there's two tank tops right here that are aimed at ragdoll lovers or ragdoll owners. That is a specific cat breed. And both of them have got a BSR, meaning they've sold even though they were recently posted. So that's definitely a good sign. So ragdoll is another niche that I would write down and take note of. Another thing you want to do whilst scrolling through these results is look out for patterns, meaning similar designs in similar niches that continuously have a BSR ranking and are getting sales. For example, I noticed quite a few designs aimed at leap day. So we've got one right here on this long sleeve. Now leap day, unfortunately, is a trending niche. And by the time you're watching this video, the trend will be over and the sales will have stopped most likely. However, most of the leap day designs have frogs on them. And there will be a lot of people out there who love frogs or are interested in frogs, regardless of it being a leap day or not. So frog is a potential evergreen niche to try and target. And that's again, something that I would note down and sort of try and validate later on. Validation is kind of the next step. At first, we just want to try and find some niche ideas. I'll also quickly break down how to validate niches once we've found them, by the way. I also did see a few designs that said, I lift like an old man trying to keep up. So this is aimed at older people, well, older men in this case, that go to the gym, that work out. Um, and I've seen two designs now on the first few pages that are selling with this specific phrase. So that's definitely a phrase or design concept that I want to take note of as well. Once you've got a list of potential evergreen niches, you want to go ahead and validate them, meaning make sure that there is demand, but also fairly low competition. So you've actually got a chance of selling. A quick example of this, the term cat shirt has 40,000 or over 40,000 results on Amazon. If we order this by BSR with this button right here, so this is going to show the lowest BSR shirts first, then we can see that there's a lot of demand. So the BSR rankings right here are extremely low. 10,000 means it's getting hundreds of sales every month, as we can see. And scrolling down, there's way more shirts that, again, have very, very low BSRs and that are selling a lot. So there's a lot of demand right here for cat shirts, but the competition is way too high. 40,000 search results means we will be buried on page 100 and our design will probably not get found. On the contrary, one of the phrases that I found earlier that seemed to be doing well is I lift like an old man. And if we type this into Amazon, I lift like an old man shirt, then we get 899 results, which is significantly less. Ideally, you want to aim for 2000 or less search results, the lower the better, obviously, but you also need demand. So again, I've ordered this by BSR. And if we scroll down in the first row, there is quite a few low BSRs, not quite as low as in the cat niche, but there is definitely multiple listings selling right here, getting regular daily sales, which is a great sign. So we've got a combination of decent demand and also fairly low competition. Alternatively, there's also a really cool free research method that you can use on Redbubble. And I use this method all the time. Now you might be wondering, why would you do research on Redbubble? It's quite a small platform and it also doesn't have the best reputation. Now you don't have to sell on Redbubble, but it still has a lot of really good free ways to conduct research. And I've actually found some of my best niches or best concepts and ideas on Redbubble itself. They're mainly selling for me on Etsy, Amazon, or maybe T Public, but initially I found the ideas on Redbubble. So one free method for doing research right here is by using PODCS. That is a research tool, which I will link in the description. It has a free plan and it's not a trial with a time period attached to it. Don't worry. You can sign up for free and then use the Redbubble trends tool right here indefinitely. The way this works is on the left hand side, we've got a bunch of trending search phrases that are currently being searched for a lot on Redbubble. In the middle, we've got the competition. So we've got very low, we've got high, low, sometimes you see medium or very high. Ideally, we want to see a green bar that is very, very empty, not filled in very much, because that means we have a low product count. So in the next tab, we see the amount of products that are listed within the trending search phrase. If we hover over best sellers right here, then we can see the top 10 best selling products within each of these niches. And that's very handy because sometimes when you hover over these, you will see someone's face. Like in this example, Daniel Larson is trending. That is definitely a niche I would not enter. So if you see people's faces, if you see logos or anything that might be related to a celebrity, a music band, a TV show, just stay away from it. There is a lot of stuff like this trending on Redbubble. So you have to kind of filter through and find more evergreen topics 
like this example right here, this looks like a location in Denmark and it's probably not linked to a celebrity or a TV show. So we should be okay to sell something related to that niche. Another quick tip, you can also click on these triangles at the top next to best sellers. If we click on it once, it will show us the highest competition niches first, which we don't really want. If we click on it twice, however, it will show the lowest competition niches at the top. So the first one literally only has two products, two search results. And again, now we need to scroll through, sort of hover over the top sellers and look at the keywords that are trending to gauge whether any of these might be potential evergreen niches. Some of them will be, others might not. So this is definitely a good way to find a lot of ideas very quickly. And I actually share niches that are found within this uh, Red Bull Trends tab on a regular basis on my channel. So make sure to subscribe if you want to be kept up to date with trends on Red Bull and on Amazon as well. I do those episodes every couple of weeks and I often also share some evergreen niches that I've found through Redbubble right here. So check out PODCS. It's another valid research method that can help you out massively. Once you've found some niches that you want to enter before creating designs, I would recommend checking for trademarks because those could get you into trouble with the marketplaces and might get your store banned. So one free way to check for trademarks is with TM Hunt. I will leave a link to this website in the description. All you have to do here is head to split search. And this is where you can type in the phrases that you want to use on your designs or some of the primary keywords of the niche that you want to include in your listing. I'll give an example right here with the phrase that I found earlier. So I lift like an old man tried to keep up. If I hit search on this, we're going to get a bunch of trademark results, but don't worry, we can filter this further down because not all of these actually apply to us. So the first thing I want to do is click on set to live and text. That's already going to narrow this list down. And then I also click on registered and set this to yes. So now we can only see the text type trademarks, which are the important ones. We can only see the ones that are actually live and registered in the US, by the way. So this looks through the US database in the clothing category for trademarks. and. We can see that lift up and try is trademark. Now those are single word trademarks for very common broad terms in the English language. So these don't actually scare me off and they're probably okay for you to use on your shirt. If a part of this phrase was trademarked, for example, try to keep up, if this was showing, then I would probably avoid that phrase or, you know, leave this part out. Maybe, maybe you would just do, I lift like an old man and you know, think of a different funny idea to carry it on. But yeah, if an actual phrase is trademarked, that is something I would be worried about. Or if it is a single word that looks more like a brand name and that is not necessarily commonly used in the English language. For example, if Nike shows up as a trademark, you shouldn't use it in your listing, even though it is a single word trademark. Here's a quick example of what a trademark looks like that you need to avoid. So in this case, I've typed in birds and real, and it shows up as a live trademarked for the text type and it is registered. And if we now open up the serial number, this is the second step that you need to take. If you found a dangerous looking trademark, this will bring up the entry on the USPTO database. And we need to head into goods and services because this will show us what it is actually trademarked for, because this phrase might be trademarked for the use on hats, right? That's another item of clothing, but we don't necessarily want to sell hats. However, right here, it says this is protecting clothing, namely shirts, hats, sweatshirts, t-shirts, long sleeved t-shirts and socks. So all these products right here are protected and that is mainly the sort of stuff that we want to sell. So stay away from this trademark or trademarks that look like this one that are covering clothing products that we want to sell and that are multi-word trademarks or phrases. So let's start creating some t-shirt designs. For this, we're going to use Ideogram AI. This is a free AI art generator that we can use commercially. And it's recently had an update and the new version gets some amazing results. By the way, alternatively, you can also use Leonardo AI to create free AI graphics. I also have a separate tutorial about that tool. 
But let me give you a quick overview of how Ideogram works. So you've got the prompt bar at the top where you can type whatever you want to see. You've got different settings on the right. I typically leave this at the default and the model we want to use is 1.0. That is the new version that gets the best results. You've got the community feed right here where you can explore other people's results. Um, you can click into these. You can then see the prompt. You can copy the prompt as well if you wanted to. You can use it for your own purposes or amend it slightly if needed. One particular prompt that's been getting me some really good results with the new version of ideogram is vector t-shirt design of a frog obviously you could change the topic right here to whatever you want in a cottage core style with the text frog off i'm busy isolated on a white background so for hit generate on this it is going to take just a few seconds and give us four different results back so i will leave this prompt down below in the description as well as two download links to my prompt guides for mid journey and dal e3 those have quite a lot of prompts that you can use in ideogram as well you might have to adjust them slightly because they don't necessarily fit the ideogram style 100 but they're a great starting point to try out a lot of different t-shirt design styles so as you can see frog off i'm busy a lot of this text looks extremely accurate it's spelled correctly and even the graphics look amazing especially for a free tool so this gets really good results let's actually try a slightly different style and amend this prompt to make a design for the phrase that we found related to lifting weights. So here I've got a bunch of different results. The prompt that I used is vector t-shirt design of a dumbbell in a vintage sunset style with the text I lift like an old man try to keep up isolated on a white background and some of these results look all right others don't but what's surprising is that a lot of them are actually spelled correctly even though it is a long phrase i lift like an old man try to keep up previously it was very hard to get longer phrases anywhere near accurate but i think this design looks pretty amazing at first i tried it with an actual graphic of an old man on there but i didn't really like the results so i changed the prompt around a bit and i'm quite happy with uh, some of these results in terms of the graphics and the font styles so feel free to use this prompt as well if you wanted to a quick bonus tip if you've got a graphic and you quite like the result but you want some similar versions of it um, and a bit more choice one additional feature in ideogram is the remix option up here so if we click on remix for this image we can then run it with a similar prompt and we can also decrease or increase the image weight so how much of this image is going to include whilst generating the new graphics and how closely is it going to stick to it so we'll just leave this at the default and hit generate again and then we should get some similar results back and this by the way can also sometimes help you fix some minor spelling errors so as you can see now we've got more graphics that look somewhat similar to the original but their slide variations so really really cool uh, i do like ideogram a lot now especially since it's been upgraded um, does it live up to like dali 3 mid journey it's, it's not as good but considering it's free the text is actually amazingly accurate and the graphics look a lot better than they did before and by the way once you've got a few graphics that you're happy with and that you want to actually use you have to open them up then click on the three dots right here that say more and then you can hit download to save the images to your device the next steps in our process will be upscaling the quality of our designs and removing the background and there's a few different ways to do this for free one method that i've recommended a lot in the past is using the clip drop free background remover i will leave a link to this in the description and this can work very well for more simple graphics so for example if i drag and drop my frog image into here hit remove background then very quickly it will take out the white it won't leave an outline and this is a perfect result i could now click on download and then upscale this or vectorize it to increase the quality and then use it on my t-shirt so for the frog image this site clip drop works quite well however if i go back and try the same for the dumbbell image right here because this is a more complex graphic clip drop is going to struggle and as you can see there's some imperfections like in between the letter d we've still got a bit of misty gray left over and just you know generally this doesn't really look 100% how I wanted to. There's a bit more gray mist between some of the other letters. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's close. It's not a bad job for a free background remover, but it's not ideal. We can do a bit better with another free method. So in this case, what I would recommend to you 
if your graphic is more complex and clip drop doesn't do a good job, I would upscale the graphic first and increase the quality. One free website for upscaling graphics in bulk is dgb.lol. This is a great website because you don't have to pay anything. There are some Google ads, but you know, you can just ignore them. And the upscale quality from this website is absolutely amazing. And you can also use it in bulk, which none of the other free tools allow you to do. So if we head over to the left sidebar, click on tools, and then choose the AI image upscaler, then we can drag and drop up to 20 images into this at the same time. Um, I'm just going to, in this example, show you it with uh, four, um, but it does work with up to 20. And then you can select an upscaler model and it goes all the way up to eight X down here at the bottom. So you can increase the quality by 800%. Again, most free upscalers only offer 2X or potentially 4X, which in this case would be balanced. Balanced would be 4X upscaling, but I would recommend going for at least 6X because you do have the option and it will get you way better results. So let's go for 6X sharp in this example and hit submit. And what that's going to do is add a task to the queue. You can find the queue over here where it says my files and it will give you an estimate for how long this is going to take. Sometimes you might have to wait 10 minutes, but if you have a list of 20 graphics, you know, that's not an issue in my opinion. It's definitely worth it waiting a little bit instead of having to pay for another subscription fee. And whilst this is running, you could just create some more designs, do some more research, or whatever else you want to do. If you come back to this page in a couple of minutes and then hit the refresh button at the top, most of your or some of your designs should be finished upscaling. So in this case, I'm going to click download for the uh, dumbbell design right here. That will be saved to my device. And now we can move on to the next step, which is removing the background in a more accurate but manual fashion. And for that process, we are going to use Photo P. This is essentially a web browser based Photoshop alternative. It has a very similar layout and many of the same features, but it's free to use. And I will have a link to this in the description along with the links to DGB, to ClipDrop, all of the other tools that I've mentioned. And what you want to do here is click on new project, then type in 4,500 pixels for the width and 5,400 pixels for the height. The DPI should be set to 300 and then we can click create. Now, first thing I'm going to do is just disable the background layer right here because we don't need it at the moment. What we want to do is drag and drop a graphic into this. And I mean that the upscaled graphic that we just got back from DGB. And now we need to remove the background. I'm just going to increase the size a little bit. And the best way that I know to remove the background right here is with the magic wand tool. So if we click on this, then any color that we click on is going to highlight that color in our design, but we need to have the design selected in the layers panel. So click on the design layer and then click on the color that you want to remove. So your background color, essentially. I'm now going to hold down Alt and scroll into this to zoom in and take a further look or closer look at what is being highlighted. And it seems to be doing quite a good job. If you're not happy with the results, it might be because you have contiguous turned on. If I change this, then it's not actually going to, you know, choose or select any of the colors that are inside that sort of closed off, like in between the letters right here as well. So make sure contiguous is unchecked and the tolerance is another thing to play around with. So if it's very low, then you won't actually select much of uh, the color, such as if I zoom in a little bit closer, this right here in the middle, these stripes, they haven't been selected, which is not ideal. So you want to mess around with the tolerance until you're happy with the selection. I think 50 actually worked quite well in my case. And now the next step is going to be heading to select and clicking on inverse. That is going to invert our selection. And now we can create what's called a layer mask or a raster mask in the layers panel. So go all the way to the bottom of your layer panel and click add raster mask right here. And now, as you can see, the background has been removed very, very cleanly from our image, even in between the letters. And if you still want to adjust and fix some of this, like fine tune it, maybe you want to get rid of some of these scattered paint splashes or whatever you want to call it, then you can also do that in Photo P. You just want to make sure to have your mask, your raster mask selected in the layers panel. So this one over here, and then you can use the brush tool, just increase the size with closing bracket. There we go. And then you can paint in your mask 
and you want to actually have black selected as your color right here because that is going to erase parts of your mask or parts of your design if you have white selected it's going to re-add your design or like paint the mask in white and that is going to reveal what's been hidden beforehand so if you're erasing stuff make sure to have black selected that's how the mask function works in this case i made the job a bit harder for myself but yeah there we go we can kind of tidy this up a bit if we wanted to um, and mess or like adjust any imperfections but there we go we've got a pretty neat looking graphic the background's been removed pretty effectively and we've also got it at a high enough quality for it to print well on a t-shirt and the last thing to do now in photo p is just go to file export as png you can give it a name right here so we could do i lift like an old man hit save and then there we go download started now it'll be saved to your device and it's ready to upload to a marketplace Speaking of marketplaces, the highest potential ones are definitely Etsy and Amazon Merch. The only issue is Etsy is not really free, so I can't mention it in this video. And Amazon Merch has quite a strict application process and it's hard to get accepted. So if you're not on the Amazon Merch program yet, I would definitely recommend to apply anyway because it's worth the effort. If you do get in, you can make a lot of money on that platform. But whilst you're waiting for your application to be accepted, I would still recommend starting on a separate marketplace as well such as t public so i will have a link in the description where you can create your first store on t public and i like this website for the fact that the upload process is very simple and easy i'm going to show you it in a minute right here but that essentially allows you to get used to seo and uploading designs because it's very very streamlined and only takes a couple of minutes whereas on a platform like etsy it's quite hard to create listings as a beginner and whilst t public doesn't have a lot of traffic compared to etsy on amazon i think there's still some decent potential right here i've made a lot of sales over the years and even though it's not my strongest platform it is still a good choice for beginners once you've created your store, you have to click on Upload Art right here in the top right corner to publish your first design. We're going to choose the single file upload in this example. And this is the screen where you need to drag and drop your finished design with the background removed. So I'm just quickly going to find that, open it up right here. It's going to take a few seconds to upload and import. And then we need to fill out a title, a description, and some tags that fit our design and our niche. And a quick tip right here, I usually use the Redbubble Tag Generator by Merch Titans, which is a free tool to help me find relevant tags that actually suit my niche. So again, I will leave a link to that in the description. In this case, I would type in you know bodybuilding or the gym, as the primary keyword and then see what comes up as recommendations and i will include some of those keywords that get suggested in my actual listing data another cool thing about t public is that whilst you write your listing data and actually type in some keywords right here you get a lot of additional suggestions so body building will probably have um, a lot of other keyword like long tail keyword ideas that I could also click on and include in the listing very easily and now we get even more suggestions of so fitness workout weightlifting so these are really really cool relevant keywords that could help describe our design I would also include old man in there because why not retirement is a good potential keyword bodybuilding retired and additionally you can also use keywords that you found with the redbubble tag generator but um, yeah that's in terms of the tags I'll just quickly write a bit of a title and description for this design as well so here we go I've got I lift like an old man funny gym bodybuilder gift as the title and then this funny design featuring a dumbbell weight and vintage sunset says I lift like an old man try to keep up so I always try and include the phrase or part of the phrase in the listing in case people are searching for this specific design and then I add some more broader relevant keywords to it as well such as it's an ideal retirement birthday or Christmas gift for bodybuilders powerlifters gym and weight lifting enthusiasts so there's a bit of a you know like basic description that you can also use yourself and amend some of the keywords to fit your own needs and then the last part is selecting some of the product colors that we want to sell on so in this case the default color could be white or something else that's very very light in terms of the background color maybe we could use heather as well so you just want to go through um, select some suitable colors right here for your design the kids products don't really apply right here to this design so i'm just going to turn those off and then right here we can click on light to make sure people can only choose lighter colors for these products and 
If you wanted to, you could also configure the placement on some of these additional products like phone cases down here. We've also got wall art, pillows, but oftentimes the default setting is actually quite good. You can still affect the background color as well. If you wanted to change this and amend it slightly with the stickers, for example, you could also change this to die cut design only. I think that looks a bit nicer. Um, so yeah, just click through these products slightly, amend them, make some changes if you want to. And then once you're ready, just click I have read and agree to the terms and conditions and click publish to have this posted to the T Public marketplace. So there you have it, a step-by-step -step process for selling print on demand products utilizing only free tools. Now, after some time, once you've got used to this process, I would still recommend expanding your designs onto Etsy as well, or Amazon, ideally, if you manage to get into the Amazon Merge program, or another good platform to consider where I'm getting quite a lot of daily sales is displayed, as well as Tostadora. I'm a big fan of Tostadora. It's not very well known, but it does have some potential for sure. So I hope this video helps. In case you're wondering whether print on demand is too saturated, you should definitely check out this video next where I share my unfiltered opinion and it will probably surprise you.